What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? Welcome to another episode of Auto Auction Rebuilds. Happy Monday to all of you. Um, what you don't realize is that for the past five days, I have been moving and cleaning and scrubbing. It has been hard on all of us. Uh, my fiance, my brother, myself, we have all literally been working tirelessly for the past five days. Um, and we are all exhausted. I'm talking four to five hours of sleep a night. This move was very hard on all of us, um, but I'm happy to say the move is complete. We are out of the old house 100%. It is empty. Um, everything is clean. The grass is mowed. Now we are in the new house and about, I'd say about 80% of the new house is set up and functional and ready to go. I'm not really digging this office. It's a little small, little cramp from what I'm used to, but it seems like things are gonna hopefully start getting back to normal sometime this week. Now, what you guys don't realize is that all the videos that you saw last week, um, those were pre-recorded like a, a while back. Those videos were, there were videos that I, I, I made and put up in preparation for this move so that you guys would be able to continue having content while I took about five, well, I don't want to say I took five days off. I did not take five days off, but five days to really focus on getting this move done. So it would be kind of a seamless transition for all of you. So now moving on to some of the, the business side of things. Um, we sold the Chevy 3500. That's the first thing I want to bring up because that kind of is that's going to kind of lead in to some details that a lot of you are, are concerned with and, and a lot of you have questions about and I'm, I'm here to hopefully try to answer that. I'm always very transparent um, with how this works, especially the finance. I get a lot of people that watch this channel because they want to see how to make money flipping a car. And there's a lot of times you're going to see me lose money on cars. And I think you see where I'm going with the Chevy 3500 here. Uh, brace yourself. Um, cause that one stung, that one stung. Here's the deal. We sold the Chevy 3500. It was a 94 3500 and, uh, it wasn't what I thought it was. I should not have bought it. I want to point that out right now. I had a lot of you tell me the minute you saw it, you, you, you guys were on point. You called me out on a BS choice that I made and it came back to bite me later, as many of you said it would. So I want to acknowledge that, and I want to publicly say that you were right, and I absolutely was wrong. It was a very, very poor decision that I have now paid for. So what did we sell the Chevy 3500 for, and what did we have in it? I did pay $6,500 for that, for that truck. That was ridiculous. That was absolutely stupid on my part. And uh, man, it's uh, that it's hard. That's hard because I love the truck so much. Like I get passionate about vehicles, and that is where I can make mistakes. I really need to focus. I need to get back to focusing on finding cars that are good money makers instead of basically just getting crazy with the cheese whiz and, and ch ch dollar dollar bill here. You know, I kind of got sidetracked, and it's like I want this, so I'm going to buy it. I made a mistake. I hope you guys can forgive me for it. It still brought reasonable content to the channel, um, but it's gone. The truck was not what I was told it was. The truck was not even close to what I was told it was. And uh, that's on me for buying it. It's on me for buying it. I, I kind of do regret it. Uh, the tires, as I found out, um, I've been driving it. I had no issues with tires or anything, but the person that bought it literally blew one of the tires on the highway as soon as he left my house. And he told me that after a closer inspection of all six tires, uh, they were all dry rotted badly. Apparently those tires, although they look new, those tires were seven years old and that truck has been sitting for a very long time. So I paid 6,500 for the truck. The throttle body that I installed on that truck, we did get it running by the way. I don't think I didn't get any videos of that because I've been rushed. We got that 454 running like a dream. It was running great. The throttle body that I bought for it was over $500 and it was the wrong one. There was something was wrong with it, whether it was the wrong size fuel injectors, the wrong idle air control valve, the wrong throttle of uh, the throttle position sensor. I can't tell you what was wrong with it. There were no vacuum leads. I checked that thing over and over and over, but it just was never right. And I, you could hear a whistle coming from the throttle body. 
something was off with that throttle body. Don't know what it was, but the truck refused to run right with it. So I sent it back. Autoplicity gave me, well, they haven't given me a refund yet, but they took it back and they said there wouldn't be an issue with the refund. I'm still waiting. I ended up taking the old fuel injectors out of the original throttle body and matching the part numbers on eBay and I got a rebuild kit. Came with all the gaskets, fuel pressure regulator, new fuel injectors that were uh, flow matched, balanced, etc., etc. Rebuilt the throttle body off camera, sorry guys, and the truck ran like a dream. And I mean, I was driving it regularly. I loved it. It was as loud, obnoxious, it's wide, it's got a big old booty on it. Beautiful truck, loved it. The interior was just horrible. Um, whoever put in that 95, 95 dashboard plus they, they did a hack job on it. It, it was bad. It vibrated. It, it just, it was real bad. The truck was having issues with, uh, the, the hydro boost because the power steering line had blown. The guy replaced the power steering line. There was air trapped in it. The truck was having lots of other problems. The steering was loose and he said the steering was rebuilt. So, I had planned on probably just keeping it because I knew I had so much money in that truck, there's no way I would ever recover from it. Might as well keep it and just continue on. And then something happened. Mike over at Weird Beard presented me with a beautiful 2000 Ford F-150 Harley Davidson and I fell in love. Like seriously, I, I saw the truck and I was just overcome with like feels you know what i mean uh it's loud it's beautiful it's not a hack job you know so there's that and and i was as soon as i got that truck back i said mike i said i can't sell it i can't let it go i was like let's see if we can't keep it on the channel and do some future content with it it's going to need a few repairs it's going to need a few things here and there the thing's got 226,000 miles on it it's going to need some stuff here and there but mechanically that car runs and drives great. The body looks wonderful. The interior looks nice on it. So I decided right then and there, especially with all the stuff happening at the shop, and I'll get into some of that too, that it was time to get rid of the 3500 and, and just be done with it. So I listed the 3500 for $5,500, and I knew there was not a snowball's chance in hell that I was going to get 5500 but I thought maybe I'd get forty five. Maybe four thousand. See where I'm going with this. I didn't even get four thousand for it. Um, the truck number one was not very popular. Not a lot of people came out to look at it. Um, so I, I dropped the price down to forty-five. At forty-five hundred dollars, I started getting a few nibbles. And that I had this on Facebook Marketplace and all of the most popular groups. I had this on Craigslist, where you now have to pay five dollars for an ad. I paid for it. I listed it on Craigslist. Keep in mind, this is a personal vehicle. This is not through the car lot or anything. This is not a salvage vehicle. This was my personal vehicle. I finally got one person to come out and actually drive it that was serious. And I had it listed for 45 at that point, and he offered me 38. And I thought to myself, wow, I'm going to lose three grand on this truck. The truck was 65. The fuel injector rebuild kit was 150 with the fuel injectors. Um, and there's some odds and ends I've probably done here and there that I'm just completely forgetting about. So, in other words, I'm losing three grand. We're in the middle of a move. This was a very expensive move. Uh, the issue's down at the shop, and it got me thinking, I could use the money more than the truck. Now, had I not bought the truck to begin with, <laughs> well, I would be $3,000 richer than I am right now. Uh, mistakes were made. You see that in thumbnails all over YouTube. I'm man enough to admit I made an impulse buy. It was a bad decision, as most impulse buys probably are. And here we are. Um, so anyway, the 454 is gone. The 3500 is gone. And I got 3800 bucks for it. Ouch. That sucked. So how do I how do I deal with losses like this? That's an important that's something a lot of you get on here. Not a lot of you, I should say, but several of you get on here and talk mad smack about uh, how how bad of a businessman I am, how horrible I am at business. The fact of the matter is, I've been doing cars most of my adult life, guys. Uh, I, I may not be the world's best mechanic, um, but I get things done. Um, I'm definitely not a body and paint guy. 
but I'm willing to experiment and try some things out and see if we can get into some of that. But let me tell you what the content of this channel seems to really be about, and it seems to be what most people enjoy about this channel. I'm going through real life stuff. I'll try to keep it kid friendly here. Real life things are happening to me on a regular basis and throughout my entire life as, as a grown man, um, things happen a lot to me more so than others. I encounter more issues, problems than most people. So a lot of you are really interested in the drama on this channel and I can't, I can't complain. I can't blame you for it. I mean, I watch drama on TV all the time, you know, everybody's curious and this isn't a scripted reality show. This is real life is happening to me right now and you guys get to join me for it. So it's kind of like the ultimate reality TV show and I'm fine with that. I'm okay with that because at the end of the day, this is raw. This is real. This is not scripted. This is my life as it unfolds. And if that's what interests you guys, I'm fine with that. Part two of what this channel is about and something that I really enjoy. When you're doing YouTube and as your channel gets really big, the pressure really starts mounting. It really does. You become under a lot more pressure and a lot more scrutiny. What I have found is that if you are not doing something you truly love and enjoy, something that you're passionate about, you will not survive as a YouTuber for long. You get burned out. I found myself getting burned out on some of these cars. And here's something else I found. Regardless of what cars I have rebuilt on this channel, and for a lot of you newer people, several months into the channel, you're wondering, oh, you haven't rebuilt anything. We have, actually. If you look back on the channel, we've done a few, nothing major, nothing huge, um, but we have done some rebuilds on the channel. And the truth of the matter is those videos don't do all that well. I'm kind of surprised. A lot of you suggest that I change my name to Auto Auction Flips. Maybe you're right. Maybe that is a more appropriate name for the channel, but it seems like what a lot of you are really interested in is seeing me go to Copart and buy cars sight unseen. And you find out, was it a good deal or was it a dud? That is what gets the views, ladies and gentlemen, not the rebuilds. And I can't lie, I am truly surprised and I am blown away that, and the statistics don't lie. That's the thing. I'm sure a lot of you are here wanting to see rebuilds. I'm, but the numbers, my analytics on YouTube are showing me that my best performing videos are videos finding out if a car runs or not, finding out if it drives home or not. Was it a good deal? Was it a bad deal? Finding out what it sold for. How much did I make? How much did I lose? The actual rebuild portions uh, don't typically generate all that many views. I mean, they do fine, but but that's not what it seems most people are interested in. So that's not to say we're not going to continue working. I've got a lot of cars and that brings us kind of into the next portion here. I don't intend on buying anything for a little while. Uh, and that is because I have several cars now piled up that I need to get fixed, get video content for you guys and get gone. Um, we are going to still attempt to paint the Mitsubishi Outlander ourselves. We're going to see how that goes. Maybe we'll like it. Maybe we won't. We'll see how the video views go. And you know, if people, if the analytics show that that's what you guys are wanting, then we can continue with that in the future. If the analytics don't do all that well, then there's no reason to do all this extra work to get less views, which equates to less money. Now, one of the big questions is how do you handle these massive losses that you incur? And I, it's true. I've incurred a lot of losses, but let me tell you something. I got my taxes done and uh, after all was said and done with all of the cars last year, I still made a net profit on cars alone, just the vehicle portion, not YouTube videos, not my job. I want to understand cars alone, a net profit of over $20,000. That's not bad. That's not bad. It's not a lot of money. It's not great money, but it's more than a lot of people make working fast food full time. So try to understand that, that even though there are times I take some pretty hefty losses and last year was definitely no exception. We lost four grand, I think on the Bonanza, three grand on the Chevy Silverado. Those two alone hurt. We lost money on the Mercedes S 600. We still cleared 20,000 in net profit from vehicles alone. So please understand that although we take some losses here, as long as we make a net profit at the end of the year, 
we're doing all right. Secondly, this is something a lot of people don't know and a lot of people don't understand. YouTube pays me for you viewing this video. Your view is what really makes my lifestyle possible. So I need to give all of you a big shout out and a big thank you for allowing me to do this because without you, none of this exists. My new house, the cars, like none of this is possible without you being here. So I wanna acknowledge that and I want you to know that I know you're here is what makes this possible. Now that does not mean that you can get on my channel, talk a bunch of trash, and I'm going to kneel and bow to you and, and, and praise you. That's not gonna happen. If you get sideways with me, I'm, I'm gonna get sideways right back at you and you can kick rocks down the road. Doesn't hurt my feelings at all because I've got enough good people on this channel. A few bad apples, a few rotten eggs are not going to really make that much of a difference for me. So with that said, YouTube does pay out pretty well. Um, lately it's been paying out in excess of $10,000 a month and that's pretty impressive. I've been using that money to do a lot of things. I think you guys have seen a lot of the cars and uh, the bad decision with the Chevy 3500, please. I understand that was horrible. Y yeah. So, you know, we bought the trailer and, and now I've got a winch and I got the shop, which turned out not to be so good. Then we got the, the lift, which was uh, $3,000 for the winch. There's been a lot of purchases of tools and things. And let's not forget, we also have several cars that I've purchased that are sitting waiting to be rebuilt. And we also need parts for those cars to rebuild them. The Volkswagen, we've got a new thermostat, we've got a new coolant temperature sensor, we've got the proper coolant for it, and that's for the, uh, the, the Jetta diesel. There's a lot of money, even though YouTube pays out really well, there's a lot of money that goes out into making the content for you guys. So uh, I want you to keep that in mind. And when I take a major loss, like $3,000 or so on a car, um, thanks to YouTube, I am able to absorb that loss without it really hurting me that badly. Now that does not mean I need to go make these uh, bad decisions regularly. Absolutely not. Um, I'm just saying that YouTube really makes it possible for me to absorb a loss like this. Next, and then we're probably going to get done with this because it's probably getting boring. Because this is a business, when I make a decision like that, like buying a $6,500 truck, having about seven grand total in it, and then selling it, losing $3,000, that is a tax deduction. Losses can actually help you. I know that doesn't sound right, doesn't make a lot of sense when you first think about it, but when you take a loss, it reduces the amount of money you have to pay in taxes to the IRS at the end of the year. Now, you don't wanna make this a habit. You don't wanna do this all the time because taking losses all the time, you will find it would've been cheaper to have just paid your taxes. <laughs> but when you do take a loss, you can at least find some uh, thankfulness, thankful, but something. You can find some kind of peace knowing that you just offset your taxes by X amount of dollars. Uh, now, when you take a $3,000 loss, you don't get $3,000 off your taxes. You get a percentage of that off your taxes. So it does help. So I think we are gonna stop buying cars for a while. I'm gonna do my best. We are keeping the Harley at least for a while. We are gonna get the Volkswagen Jetta diesel. We're gonna do some work on video on that. We're gonna get the, it's already looking a lot better. We're gonna get the interior detail. We're gonna get the paint job for Mako to show you what a $300 paint job looks like. Uh, we're gonna get the windshield replaced. We're gonna see what we can sell it for. We'll see if we can make some money on that car. That car should look pretty clean by the time it's done. I think you're gonna be really, really surprised how the Jetta comes out. The Outlander needs that rear control arm replaced. The Outlander is gonna have to be painted. You know, we're gonna try to do that ourselves and God, <laughs> fingers crossed. We're gonna see how that goes. Um, and then we got the two darts that we gotta complete the engine swap on. And we really need to be getting more into that. Um, so there is a lot of content coming. Some of you asked about the Chevy Cruze. I wanna reassure you, the Chevy Cruze is actually back on the Toro platform like that. It's making money, the brakes are fine. I've had no issues. The car is doing very well. Um, so I decided to keep the cruise instead of sell it. And I think, ding dong, that is DoorDash uh, bringing us some, uh, I think it's Ted's Escondido. So perfect timing. <laughs> Sorry, sidetrack, I hear food. Um, I think that's gonna conclude everything that I wanted to talk about. I know this video is boring as all get out, 
but there are a lot of you that are asking a lot of questions and instead of sitting there and typing out for 10 hours what's going on i figured i would make one video hopefully answering all your questions we are going to use the harley davidson for occasional towing i've already used it it seems to be doing all right um i bought i put some brand new tires on it today and what's weird is we put some uh the tires on it were 275 20s they were the wrong size it now has 275 45 20 xls and the speedometer is like between 10 and 15 miles an hour off i think the gears are different in that truck and that means i'm going to end up having to get a tuner so that i can correct the uh the gear ratio to have to play with it basically to get the speedometer recalibrated um, but the harley truck is doing really well it looks really really good i'm excited to have it back and i'm excited to maybe keep it on the channel and see we're going to put it to work and we're going to take care of it and if something breaks then we're just going to fix it i really love that truck and i'm going to do my best crossing my fingers to hold on to that truck because you guys seem to love it so much and i truly do too so i don't think there's anything else the C6 Corvette, where I hit it with the Nissan 350Z, we still have not fixed that. I need to order the fender. I need to order the door skin or the door, and we are going to fix the Corvette at some point. I just want to assure you that with everything going on, I'm really busy. Um, the shop, we're not getting rid of it. All the cars are gone from the shop. I moved everything out of there. Everything is in compliance now with Dell City, at least as of today. Everything is, is in compliance. We're going to hold on to the shop. And we're going to continue working because that's what I do best. And for the rest of you, please drop a comment below. I don't respond to comments very often anymore because there's like 1,500, 2,000 comments each video. I, I can't keep up with that anymore. I'm just one guy trying to do everything. But uh, comment below. I will read your comments. Most likely, I'll read most of the comments. Um, and tell me what you think. You know... What I, I know what the analytics say, but I would really like to see some of you comment below and say, yeah, I watch you for the drama. Or, yeah, I watch you to see if a car you've picked up at Copart was going to be a good deal or a bad deal. And how many of you are actually here to watch rebuilds? Because there's like a million YouTubers out here rebuilding some fantastic cars. And unfortunately, my channel's not even close to being on that level yet. Neither is my skill set, so we're still a long way from that. But regardless, I want to say this. If you don't love what you do on YouTube, you will never last. You will burn out. And I can also say that even when you start making really good money on YouTube, which I feel like I'm making really good money right now, you will burn out. You will, and uh, that's a bad thing. you got to stick to what you enjoy. And let me tell you, and I'm going to conclude with this, what I enjoy most on this channel is buying cars from Copart, having no clue whether these things are gonna be good or not. It's the first drive. The acquisition is the most fun that I have. Second to that is getting the car that I really wanted and attempting to drive it. After that, I start getting bored. That is where I have the most fun. I don't like selling cars. It's not fun. I truly do not enjoy selling cars at all. Um, I enjoy buying them. I enjoy driving them and finding out what's wrong with them and what's right with them and sharing it with you. So with that, comment below and tell me what it is you enjoy about the channel because I think what I would like to do is focus more on what my subscribers actually like, what you really enjoy. And if it's the drama and the acquisition and walking around a new car, if that's what you enjoy, we can focus on that. Instead of me busting my knuckles and cutting my hands up on repairs that y'all aren't even interested in. I gotta admit, how many people are really interested in seeing a motor and transmission swap on a Dodge Dart? That's a lot of work. If, you, if I could make the same money buying a car at Copart and driving it to the shop, which would you rather do? You know, if, if it was you, would you rather bust your knuckles swapping a motor and transmission or would you rather just buy a car, drive it to a shop and call it a day? You know what I mean? Work smart, not hard. So at the end of the day, it's kind of, what do you guys want? What is it you wanna see? And with that, we're going to get out of here. We are going to do the motor swap on the Dart. That, that's just the cars. I got too much money tied up in these cars. We got to get them fixed and we got to sell them because I could use the money to, to do other things. And hopefully, as time goes on, we'll be able to get in some better, more interesting vehicles for you guys. But uh, I really enjoy doing these cars that the average, this is, this is stuff the average Joe can do. 
The average Joe can't go out and buy a Lamborghini. Not even a Copart Lamborghini. You're still talking six figures, guys. Um, while the videos are fun to watch, and I do enjoy watching them myself, you know, McLarens and stuff, I uh, Hellcats, I love watching this stuff. This is not stuff the average person is going to be able to go out and buy. I enjoy going out and finding the cars the average person can buy and, and, and showing you what you could get, what kind of a deal you could get at Copart for yourself. I think it keeps the channel more down to earth and more real. It's more realistic. Now, with that, I'm going to get out of here. I've wasted enough of your time, almost 30 minutes in. I appreciate you guys taking the time to watch and uh, truly... And I mean this, like from the bottom of my heart, thank you all for making my life possible. You you already know I'm from the trailer park, man. This is, I'm living in a, in a this house is almost $200,000. I'm not bragging. I'm not bragging at all. I'm, I'm very humble about it. Like it's emotional for me to think that uh, I live here. Uh, I'm not doing nearly as well as a lot of other YouTubers, but I'm doing better than others as well. So for a kid from the, from the trailer park, it's a dream come true, man. A Corvette in the driveway, an older one, but still it's a, it's a Corvette. And I've got a beautiful Harley Davidson truck. I've got a lovely fiance and we've got a beautiful house. And I could not have done this without all of you. So not gonna get emotional about it, but it's like, seriously, you'd have to come from where I come from. You know what I mean? You'd have to come from the gutter. You'd have to come from the bottom and be where I am today to just be like, wow, I'm so blessed. I'm so thankful that there are people like you out there that are willing to watch these videos and make my life possible. This is a dream for me. And thank you for making this possible. Stay safe out there, everybody. I will catch you all very soon in the next one.